How are you feeling? John Riggs here, back from the Portland Retro Gaming Expo 2019. I had a wonderful time. My first time I ever brought my daughter Lily with me as well. And Lily and I hosted a panel on Saturday. We were also part of the big uh, Metal Jesus Rocks mega panel uh, on Saturday as well. So thank you for stopping by the panels. Thank you for coming up, saying hi, even if it's just a quick, like, one of those things, or uh, if you came up and asked for a picture, some of you even asked for an autograph, which I think is still kind of weird, because I'm just like, I'm just some dude who literally talks into my phone in literally my kitchen, because it has the best lighting. <laughs> but thank you uh, all the same for making Portland uh, Retro Gaming Expo 2019 a very special expo for me, um, as well as for Liddy. Uh, in fact, the first thing I'm going to show in my pickups video is this. This was my name placard uh, during my panel that was like right there, and they, they took it out, and I was like, oh, I'll keep that, so... I got, I got one of these. I have a couple of these from other uh, expos in the past, too, but this is fun to keep. It's just like, you know, proof I was there, <laughs> I guess. Uh, but I'm going to show you all the things that I picked up here and a couple things that were gifted as well. And I kind of want to start immediately with um, Walter Day was there. He's the uh, the guy at Twin Galaxies, all the big scores. He's the dude who wears, like, the striped shirt, the referee shirt or whatever. Um and earlier, uh, my buddy Ryan from Old School uh, Gamer Magazine was like, dude, shoot us a picture and a quick bio. We're going to have something special there for you. Um, and then Walter Day was like, hey, it's nice to meet you, John, and show up at the panel. The panel's at this time. Well, I had, I had, it was on Saturday. I had two panels on Saturday, and also, like, a bunch of us were doing a signing. I was like, oh, I can't be there at 2 o'clock, but I'll get there as soon as I can. I showed up at the tail end of the panel, and he was like, oh, I'm glad you're here. Come up on stage. And they presented me with this from uh, Old School Gamer Magazine, which is a very cool magazine, too. I've covered it on this channel a few times. Um, not only did I get a cool uh, certificate of sorts, but they actually hooked me up with, like, my own collector's card. So I'm I'm on a card with my bio and a little bit about me. And um, if you collect these cards, I, I know there's, like, almost 4,000 of them. Like, over, you know, there's something like 3,000. What am I on here? Does it have the number? I'm 3,252. <laughs> there's there's a lot of cards out there, um, but uh, but very honored and uh, and thank you for letting me be on this card. I guess if you collect these cards, I'm now available on a card. They asked for a picture, so I sent them really just the the easiest picture I had access to, which happened to be the one of me playing uh, Eagle Island on the Switch. Um, if I knew it was gonna be maybe immortalized on a card, and I, I had kind of and I shouldn't say if I had the feeling. I mean I I had, I had kind of a feeling that this was gonna happen. Um, when they asked for a bio and a picture, I knew where I was coming from and stuff like that, and they asked me to be part of the panel. Um, I could kind of see where I was going. However, um, I probably could have chose a better picture than this. I mean, I'm sure the Eagle Island people don't mind. I'm sure Screenwave Media doesn't mind. Ironically, Screenwave Media, right? Um, yeah, but I'll, uh, you know what? I'll take it. And it's, it's a great-looking picture of me. What can I say? So, uh, very cool. And thank you, both uh, Old School Gamer Magazine and Walter Day. This is very cool. I need to get this framed Put it up there. Restorationist. During the panel, I was like, I, I questioned the word restorationist, but um, there's an English major in the audience, and he assured me that restorationist w is a legit word. And even if it wasn't, it is now. So, weird. I have, I have my card. And for future conventions, too, they gave me a whole stack of them to give away. So for future conventions, I'm going to keep bringing them until I run out. Um, so, so watch out for those. Should be kind of fun. Uh, moving on to what else did I pick up? What else did I pick up? Retro, uh, retro bit was there. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of these guys here. I'll show you this one first. I'll show you this one first. This is uh, this is from uh, Retro Bit. This is the uh, uh, classic style six button Genesis controller. It has the USB though, so it doesn't play on your Genesis, but it will play on your Genesis Mini. So if you have a Genesis Mini, it'll work just fine. If you have a Switch, it works on Switch as well. So you've got that Genesis collection on there. Um, making it happen for you. So um, I like the Genesis controller. And I like the, I like the Genesis six button controller. I just like the, just like how it feels. I like the layout of that too. Um, and I'll show these two at the same time here too. These are the, these are the new Bluetooth ones. You got to go wireless, got the clear blue of course, and then also the transparency for the Sega Saturn uh, wireless controllers on those. I don't know if these are available yet. I think, I think they gave me the, Ooh, you know, Hey, ch check these out. So we're, we're going to see a video on these here right quick. I'm curious to see how they go. I'm a fan. It's also compatible with Steam, PC, Mac, PlayStation 3. Some place I, I have that Genesis collection on the PlayStation 3, so that'll be handy. And then Saturn. Um, I mean, you got it for the Saturn. I mean, and it plays on your... You're good. So this is the uh, the wireless uh, pad. Okay, so it's wireless for the not for the Genesis itself, but for, uh, like, USB-ported things. Interesting. And it works for the Switch as well, so cool. All right. I'll take it. I'll take it. And then the Saturn, I just love Saturn. I'm just such a big Saturn, uh, Saturn fan. And this is the Saturn one for also the same thing. Steam, PC, Mac, Android as well. I do have an Android phone. Uh, PlayStation 3. So you can maybe place a 
your uh, your classics, your Saturn classics on those systems. Neato Bandito. I can dig it. I can dig it indeed. Uh, let me start with, uh, let me go here. The Q Dogs were in representation. I'm a fan of them. Watch their channel. I've known them uh, for years and years, um, just by the nature of we were always in the Northwest. Yeah, I think they're based out of the Portland area. They have their own channel though. And um, let me sh let me show you where this came from here. Here's the here's the little insert from Warp Zone Video Games Collectibles and 3D Printing. Warpzonegames.ca. Warpzonegames.ca. They 3D print these. What is this, you ask? I'm asking you, what is it? <laughs> what it is, is you have your Atari game. This is an Atari homebrew um, that I just already happen to have. But if you're cleaning your games, and that, that thing locks into place. Brilliant technology for the time. So the pins aren't exposed, getting all dusted in there. But if you want to, uh, this is the very first time I've ever actually used this. So I'm hoping this actually works on the first time. Boy, my luck it won't. We'll see here. So it's supposed to do that and then make it think that it's going into the system. So the pins become exposed. And of course, this is a homebrew cart, so this might actually not work with this cart in particular, but I wouldn't see why it wouldn't. Maybe it goes this way. Let's see here, how do I do this? No, it looks like it fits this way. So when I do that, then do I just push down on it? I don't wanna break it. I should, should have probably practiced this first before I started filming, huh? Uh, of course, I grabbed the homebrew cart. Do I have another Atari? I don't think I have an Atari cart nearby. They assured me it worked, though. All right, I'm not going to worry about that. But that's what it does. <laughs> so much for demonstration. <laughs> that, was the, that was the only Atari cart I could find nearby. Um, but that is cool. So, like, when you're cleaning your Atari games, for instance, your Atari 2600, um, that's what that's for. And maybe 7800, too. Hmm, maybe. Maybe. Uh, I stopped by the Neo Geo World, and they had these for free. I mean, actually, I don't know if it was for sale or not, but they're like, oh, yeah, here, here, take one of these, too. I'm talking about buddy Maurice. Crazy old Maurice. Hmm? Well, he's not crazy, but he's a good guy all the same. And this is, I'm trying to get this out of the way here for you, um, but it converts from one controller to the other. Let me show you this thing. Let me show you how cool this is. Come on, you. Come on, buddy. All right, so it looks like this, and it has a port like that, and it goes in like that, but it does your PlayStation 3 to Xbox 360 or PC controller adapter. So if you want to play uh, the one on the other, you can plug your PlayStation 3 controller in here to play it on your Xbox 360. Um, I do prefer PlayStation controllers over Xbox controllers, I'm sorry to say. So something like this will be very handy for me. Get some more use out of my 360 all the same. Just have it sit in a box in a closet in, I think, literally my bedroom. <laughs> I haven't plugged it in in, in a couple of years at least. Uh, during our panel, during our panel, the Metal Jesus Rocks panel, um, there's somebody in the audience who's like, hey, I have gifts for all of you, but I'm leaving right now, so I'm just going to go up there and hand you what I got and everything like that. And um, Doodly hooked me up with, uh, he just came back from Japan and uh, had this for the... Um, for the import uh, GameCube. I love import GameCube uh, boxes. And I do have a Japanese GameCube, uh, thanks to my buddy Fox. I have a Japanese GameCube. Um, so it gives me a chance to play some of these imports because I don't have, my, my, my GameCube is my OG GameCube. I had it since day one launch date GameCube. And I, I don't want to like solder anything into it or mess it up, you know? It's like, I wouldn't mind getting another GameCube to do all that, which it's funny, I think I have two other GameCubes. There's nothing stopping me from <laughs> modifying those. <laughs> but I still use my OG GameCube because that was the first one I had. But the Japanese GameCube that I have it works for something like this. So um, he just kind of came up to the stage and kind of gave us all a free game and as a thank you. And um, and thank you. Looking forward to checking this out. I like, I like the Gundam-style stuffs. Also grab this. Another homebrew for my Nintendo. Armed for battle. Armed for battle. Real-time strategy on this one. If you dig the real-time strategy... That style, armed for battle, right up there. This comes CIB too. It comes with the box. I mean, it comes with the box. You think? <laughs> it comes with the game. <laughs> There's a manual in here too. <laughs> How late is it? I didn't get enough. I haven't been able to sleep much uh, since the entire time I was at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo, like the, with the meetups and just staying up late. And I have to wake up early to get to the convention on time and all that. And I uh, didn't get much sleep last night either. How awesome is this? Now this is from uh, my buddy Silent James. You can look him up at Silent James Live on uh, on Twitter. Um, has a great book. Uh, I've covered some of this stuff in the past, and um, he sent us 
an original print like this, but then we modified it a little bit, so um, it was a little more spaced out so we could put all of our names on it. Um, and then my daughter, Lily, of all people, went through the line and uh, got it signed by everyone, too. Um, she thought it was funny because uh, Metal Jesus put his name as Bob. <laughs> and I don't know why I signed it. I just signed it because for the sake of signing it, I could have put Dad on there or something, right? But I, I didn't put Dad on there. What else we got? We got a few more things, and then uh, we'll call it good. This was from my buddy Gary. This is from my buddy Gary, too. Um, my buddy Gary, my Gary buddy, my buddy Gary, too. Um, this is the, um, there, and they're really, it's not me. It really, they're in central Illinois. There really is a Riggs Beer Company hat, or there really is a Riggs Beer Company. Great beer, too. I've had it before. And um, I was like, oh, it's perfect for me because I like beer, and my last name's Riggs. Um, I had a hat. He, he gifted me a hat last year. But it's been stepped on, it's been rolled around, it's been missing that I found it underneath the box and stuff, so it was kind of and crushed. I was like, dude, if you're coming to the Portland Retro Gaming Expo, can you send me another one? Can you bring another one with you? I'll pay you back. And he actually never asked for money, so I still gotta, I gotta PayPal him something here pretty soon. He's like, and not only that, uh, but this comes from Southeast Game Exchange. Uh, he was like, you know, you know, Gary said, myself, along with uh, JLove81, along with Linda, aka Gamer Girl, uh, they all saw this, I guess they all pitched in or something, and uh, got me... This wonderful art piece of <laughs> some of my favorite, some of my favorite uh, breakfast characters in a very mean mode for some reason. I don't know why they're so mad. I thought that was pretty funny though, and th and thank you so much. Thank I mean you you know you know r right up my alley with the kind of stuff I like. This is excellent. This is awesome. I love it. When I get more room, I'll be able to put up some of these. Uh, I have I have room for that, and I have more room that way. But then then that just gets ridiculous. I need to get something a little bit more, a little bit better organized, a little bit more going on. Uh, got a few things left. I'll go with the cereal since we're already on the topic of cereal. Now, I want, I need to, I need to preface this uh, by saying thank you, um, thank you for thinking of me when it comes to breakfast cereal. But also keep in mind, and this is coming from, I'm going to the um, like, like other game, other game conventions that I have to fly out to. I f I travel super light. I travel super light, and I just, you know, I have, like, one suitcase and one carry-on, and, I mean, and that has to include my clothes, my cosplay, my CPAP that I have to bring with me, um, oftentimes whatever games I'm selling, and then usually that means whatever games I'm picking up <laughs> to bring back, and then sometimes they say, like, oh, hey, um, I, bought you the, I bought you a box of cereal, and oftentimes I don't have room for a box of cereal. I wish I did. I don't. I mean, sometimes I'll just eat it at the, con like, I'll eat it in the hotel room <laughs> just so I don't have to fly it back. But with Portland, I can drive. And uh, my buddy uh, Caleb got me the banana, banana cream frosted flakes. These actually aren't so bad. If you like that artificial banana flavor, not so bad. So happy to have this on the shelf. What I'm saying is if I was at another convention, like, you know, I'm coming to Retro Game Con here pretty soon. Um, I mean, just other conventions that I have to fly to. Like, thank you for thinking of me when it comes to cereal, but honestly... If you gift me a box of cereal, I'll probably eat it in the hotel room and probably won't be able to bring it back. Unless it's, like, something super fancy, like I don't have access to in, in the United States. I don't know. We'll see. But one thing I don't have access to in the United States... Look at this. The first thing you thought was Rice Krispies, but it's not. It's Mini Wheats. This is Frosted Mini Wheats from Canada. Thank you for the Frosted Mini Wheats from Canada. Original. Funny, they, they use the, the blue with the, the white letters, like Rice Krispies does. Ours is like yellow, I think. Oh, it's like a yellowish orange. I'm, I, I, I can literally see some of my, where I keep my cereal up there. But thank you. And this, this is somebody just came up. And I, I, if, I, if I caught your name, I'm sorry, I didn't remember it. But I you know, didn't catch the name of the person who gifted me Canadian Mini Wheats. That's awesome. I, I love cereals from other places, especially cereals we don't have access to here in the United States. Um, and things like this are, are niche to me, too. Because it's just like it's a different packaging. Probably, um, I could probably, you know what, should I compare them? I don't know if I'll compare them right now. I'll, maybe I'll do a video later, you know, doing a taste test comparison. America versus Canada. Who has the better, uh, who has the better frosted mini wheat? Um, but a lady came up and had those for me, and, and thank you so much. See, I love it when I can, I love it when I can drive cereal back and not have to worry about flying it back. Because if that came to me and in another, like if I was at Retro Game Con, too many games or something like that, and somebody gave me this box of this. And I, like I wouldn't be able to fly it back because I wouldn't have any room for it, so I would end up eating in the hotel room, you know. Or maybe ship. I, I guess there's nothing wrong. With, there's nothing stopping me from shipping it back to myself. You know, I guess I could do that. I suppose. Uh, my buddy Jimmy Hoppa was there. I'm a huge fan of Jimmy Hoppa. I uh, retro gaming for the win on a on a, on the Twitters. 
And um, we hosted a panel last year. We actually hosted an import gaming panel last year, which was a lot of fun. And then today I saw him, or not today, but you know, a couple days ago, I saw him at the convention. And he's like, oh, dude, I got something for you. Got something for Lily. For Lily, he gifted her a, um, a box of like uh, rice candy, but it has like the cellophane, like the rice paper that you can actually eat too, which I thought was pretty cool. And then this, it doesn't actually work, but it is a mini Famicom disc system with a RAM adapter. And it even came with like mini, mini discs. So cute, so tiny. It's like proper to size too. Oh man, that's so cool. So thank you for this. This is this is awesome. This is fantastic. I love little stuff like this. This is like I never even thought about it. Um, very well made too. Like it wasn't just like some dude 3D printed it. It was like, I don't know how to describe it, but it's very, it's very cool. And it came with several discs, uh, several disc games too. It doesn't work or anything. It's just, it's just for art. It's just for show. Just for a fun thing to look at all the same. I want to show you this. Three bucks. I got this for three bucks. Kubert's Quasi Questions. A riddle book to make you laugh. I'll read you from one, and then maybe I'll do a full review on this book later, because I love my video game books. Uh, the question is, um, what kind of truck did Sam call when he dropped the brick on his foot? He called a tow truck. He called a, uh, he, call, he called a tow truck. <laughs> that and so much more. <laughs> and then this little, <laughs> what a great thing. I love it. Um, and is that it? Oh, I don't know. There's, uh, yeah, my buddy. Oh, there's this too. I can't forget this. I can't forget this. Look at this hat. Ooh, I'm going to wear this right now. Check it. My buddy Marcus representing. Stop by. Saw him on the floor a few times. And then this is probably, I have a big old head. So I've got to crank this thing probably all the way to the back. Probably all the way to the back. I got a couple more things to show off too. There we go. It's a nice looking hat. I'll take it. I'm not even sure what votary means. <laughs> means something anyway. Oh yeah, speaking of hats, Retrobit also, um, um, they're like, what size of shirt do you wear? I'm a double XL. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Um, but they gave me this shirt. They made this shirt, which I thought was kind of fun. It's great material on this too. But of course you wear that shirt because it's like, oh, look at the meme. And then on the back, that's when they advertise. But I'll, I'll, I'll rock this. I'll wear this shirt with pride. Don't think I won't. Look at this. We don't have this in the United, the United States. We don't have this in uh, Northwest. We don't have Skyline Chili. This is apparently... The staple chili of Cincinnati. And my buddy uh, Ricky Henry was there. Does, uh, you know, things with like night flight and stuff like that. Serving size, one cup. Servings per container, about two. Oh, this is all for me. I guess today I'm two people, because when I try this, I'm going to try it sometime soon. We don't have Skyline Chili. All I know about chili like is like Napa Chili or whatever that stuff is. Nally Chili or whatever. And it's like, I think it's like Nally Chili or something like that. But he's like, this This is the game changer. So I'm looking forward to trying this proper. It's going to be awesome. And we don't have these potato chips here, so he hooked me up with these. The problem is they busted open in flight, so they've been open for the last few days. And I haven't tried them. But these are the uh, barbecue. Two Cincinnati icons celebrating historic anniversaries uh, with the um, red stockings. What? Is it grip Grippos? 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 It's only $1.49 for a bag. That's not bad. Grippos and the Cincinnati Reds. No. No. Oh, they're good. I got no complaints. I like them. I dig them. Good looking out, buddy. I'm going to meet you finally. That's, I'm, that's one of the best things about going to the Portland Retro Gaming, I suppose. Like, seeing, like, you know, meeting all these people that you hear about online and you see about them online and you talk to them online all the time. Sometimes it's kind of funny because, like, they all have Twitter. And they follow me or we talk to each other on Twitter sometimes. And they'll be like, hey, guess who I am? And I feel so bad at it because it's like, I don't know. <laughs> and they're like, oh, I'm not my real name. And my Twitter um, picture is not my real face. And I was like, how am I supposed to know who you are? What about that? So I had a great time at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. I thank you for watching this video of me rambling on for almost 20 minutes now. And um, 
And I thank you for you being you. And my next convention is coming up here in two weeks as I'm filming this. Um, November 2nd and 3rd, I'll be at uh, Syracuse, New York for Retro Game Con. And then at the last convention I'm confirmed for for now, 29, uh, for 2020, we'll see what comes up. Thanks.